What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2025 Hyundai Palisade, courtesy of Jack G. and Volvo Hyundai in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So today we're in the new Palisade because there's actually a couple nice updates for the 2025 model year. You also get America's best warranty being five years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100 100,000 miles on the powertrain. That's a ton of peace of mind right there. You also get three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. That's going to save you some money there. And of course, this is a three row SUV. So you got tons of space and this is Hyundai's largest three row SUV right now as well. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, Please. Let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2025 Palisade. First one being the SE starting at $36,800, which is a modest $400 bump from the 2024 model year. SEL for $39,550, XRT for $42,650, SEL Premium for $44,150, Limited for $48,200, Calligraphy for $50,600, and lastly, the Calligraphy Night Edition, which is the one we are in today, starting at $54,100. And so a couple things there, the SEL premium, that is a new trim level for the 2025 model year. And that was all pricing for the front wheel drive version. If you wanted to add all wheel drive, simply add $2,000 then to any of those prices. But to make things simpler, regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Palisade is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a 3.8 liter direct injected V6, putting out 291 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 262 pound feet of torque coming in at 5,200 RPM. That power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters, which of course you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit. Zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.1 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 19 in the city, 26 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 19 city, 24 then on the highway for the all wheel drive, taking regular unleaded fuels. But so that before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the Palisade, did want to mention to you guys the drive modes. There's a circular dial located just to the right of the shift buttons. And so drive modes will include smart, sport, comfort, eco, and snow. Adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, the steering sensitivity, the all-wheel drive system engagement, and the side seat bolsters as well, which is kind of wild. But so anyways, now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find it straight away. Let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first and Let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here. All right, and first gear and go. Oh, delay. Okay, so that was the paddle shifter test. There is definitely a delay to the paddle shifters. Now, I still like that they're on the Palisade. Reason being is because we are going down a massive hill right now. And we do tend to get a good bit of snow here in Pennsylvania. So if it's snowing out and the roads are covered in snow, rather than actually hitting the brakes and we're sliding off the road, what I could do is just tap the left paddle shifter here, do a little bit of engine braking. The vehicle does slow down without me having to hit the brakes. And that's a lot more safer slowing down, going down a hill than actually hitting the brakes themselves. So I love like it for that reason it's a safety feature but having said that i don't think many people are going to be using the paddle shifters on the hyundai palisade a three row suv but anyways let's go ahead and find one more straight away let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2025 palisade here up to speed all right in three two one go all right i'm digging it <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Zero to 60 in 7.1 seconds. That's plenty respectable, especially for a larger three row SUV. So 100% on point. You're not going to have any issues in merging onto the highway, but too along at that acceleration you guys know braking is equally important and so up front you will find 13.4 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12.4 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 is your stopping distance goes that comes in at 126 feet a little bit on the higher side of things but as far as braking feel goes it's on the softer side of things so it's more like a luxury braking feel i'll just put it that way it doesn't bite really hard or anything like that having said that wouldn't have minded hyundai if you firmed up the braking feel just a little bit 
on the Palisade because 126 feet is a little bit on the higher side of things. Now, it's not as bad as, let's say, the Volkswagen Atlas that comes in 139 feet. Compared to that, this thing is wonderful, but I don't know, I just like a firmer braking feel. Having said that, in a three-row SUV, you don't need that. It's just my personal preference, but I don't mind the braking. But to go along with that, let's go ahead and touch on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it's actually one of the first things I noticed. This is an incredible ride quality. This Palisade is doing great. Like absorbing York's road of perfection is really, really good. So one of the smoother three-row SUVs out there, and I've driven all of them at this point. So incredibly smooth ride. Hyundai does an incredible job with that. I noticed that when I first bought my three-row Hyundai Santa Fe back in the day, the ride quality is really one of the things that really makes the um, Hyundai SUV stand out for whatever reason. But anyways, touching on steering feel, it's pretty much as you would expect for a three-row SUV. Now, it's not a super loosey-goosey steering feel, but it's not a heavy steering feel either. It's, it's just right, like the three little bears or something. Touching on cabin noise, the Hyundai has come so far with their lack of cabin noise. I'm telling you guys, usually back in the day, it was bad, but now it's brilliant. Like they've made night and day changes um, to the Palisade in the last couple of years because now you get an acoustic laminated front windshield for all trim levels. You get acoustic laminated front door glass for the SEL trim level and up. And for the limited and calligraphy trims, you also get acoustic laminated rear door glass. Let me tell you guys, you may not know this, but acoustic laminated front door glass, that's a lot of times an option on luxury manufacturers like BMW and Mercedes. Acoustic laminated rear door glass, that's what makes non-existent. You hardly ever find that, even on luxury automakers so the fact that that's even available on the palisade is absolutely mind-blowing having said that incredibly serene cabin here in the palisades so you're definitely not going to have any issues there touching our rear visibility with all of my seats down right now i can see perfectly fine out the back but honestly because of the shape of the palisade you really shouldn't have any issues with rear visibility that should be 100 on point there rain sensing windshield wipers are going to come on the limited and calligraphy trim so much like today whenever the palisade detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's going to automatically automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So just one less thing you got to worry about there. And again, with the limited and calligraphy trims, you're going to get a head up display. So right now I am looking at a, uh, I'm looking at my speed, speed limit and uh, safety features all the way to the right there uh, projected onto my windshield. So better help assisting me with forward visibility so I could better enjoy the drive in this thing. But I haven't even got to my very favorite part about this particular Palisade yet, so I'm gonna save that for the interior segment, but now let's go ahead and make our way to the exterior of our brand new 2025 Hyundai Palisade. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2025 Hyundai Palisade finished in abyss black, in case you were curious of the exact exterior color name. But by the way, well done, Hyundai. That is a really cool name for an exterior color, so not all manufacturers give their colors cool names like that. So. I like it, but as always, let's go ahead and start with where the Palisade is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter K, indicating that the Palisade is built and assembled in Korea. I love that as well. But starting up front, LED headlights to the sides. That does come standard on all trim levels across the board. You get the automatic feature with those. You also get automatic high beams for all trim levels across the board. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So very convenient one there. LED daytime running lights, of course, coming standard. You got LED accent lighting as well. Front skid plates actually come standard for all trim levels across the board for a little light overlanding perhaps. And then to the uh, bottom corners there, you will find some front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics. But the night edition that we have with us here today obviously is going to turn all of the uh, previous aluminum kind of accents into gloss black accents. So keep in mind that. So if you're looking at an other trim level, like that bottom lip is gonna be aluminum on a lot of other trim levels, but it's gonna be gloss black on the night edition. So we're gonna have a lot of black accents. That's all I'm trying to say, but it looks good with our black exterior, but Anywho, that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the Palisade, all the way to the top, you will find some roof rails. That's gonna come on the SEL trim level end up, by the way. 
black crossbars for the XRT. The XRT is kind of like the off-roading trim level, so to speak. Rear privacy glass does come standard. You got satin chrome window surrounds coming standard as well. We still got those. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated. They are auto dimming as well with LED integrated turd signals. And I like the C-shaped design for the turd signals too in those side mirrors. I think that was a nice little added touch, a little more attention to detail there. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. You're gonna find 18 inch alloys for the SE and SEL trims, and then 20 inch alloys varying in design for the XRT trim level and up. So every trim level is gonna kind of have a different look to it, but I like this look on the uh, calligraphy that we have today, the black edition, but that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, and so now since we are around to the back of the Palisade, all the way to the top, you will find a body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper, of course, LED taillights for the SEL trim level and up if you wanted a little added illumination at night there. One of the things I always liked about the taillights here is kind of this design just to the right of the taillights. You got these like vertical bars. I think that's a cool little design element. But anyways, I just wanted to mention that you got the Palisade lettering spelled out horizontally just below the Hyundai logo there. We have an optional towing package down there to the bottom. You guys might see that, but it is a single exhaust outlet, but it does have dual satin chrome tips i think they look so dang good in a world where so many automakers are tucking away their exhaust these days there's very few of them now that keep them exposed and looking good like this so i like it but having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Palisade, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is gonna be a hands-free power tailgate if you go with the limited or calligraphy trim levels. Those are the two ways to go ahead and do that. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 18 cubic feet behind that third row at least. If that was not enough space, of course the third row does fold down, bumping that up to 45.8 cubic feet. Then with all rows folded, 86.4 cubic feet. That's a ton of space back there. If you were looking for a comparison, I'll give it to you here. The Honda Pilot comes in at 87 cubic feet, so nearly identical there. Telluride's a little more at 88 cubic feet, and the Toyota Highlanders a little less at 84.3 cubic feet so that's kind of where it slots in there but there is a 60 40 split of course for those rear seats there's actually some buttons found in the cargo area to go ahead and easily fold down that third and second row actually as well so i liked seeing that back there Grocery bag hooks do come standard back there. You got some LED cargo lighting. There's a 12 volt power outlet. You got tie down anchors. There's some nice handy seat belt hooks. I always liked that with Hyundai. Uh, if you were to lift up then under the uh, cargo floor, you will find some in-floor storage and it's actually a decent amount. So that's definitely gonna be nice for putting an ice scraper or a tire inflator kit or whatever you wanna put back there. So I always like that, but then making our way up to the third row legroom that is going to come in at 31.4 inches. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in that third row there. Rear cup holders do come standard, but for the limited and calligraphy, you also get USB charging ports for the third row passengers. That's incredible. I always love when manufacturers do that and they, they hook up the third row passengers as well. So big fan of that and you do have rear ventilation found in the ceiling of this thing so third row passengers can stay uh perfectly comfortable back there then making our way up to the second row legroom that is going to come in at 42.4 inches that's so much rear legroom guys for reference i mean even six feet tall still this is how much space i had back there Captain's chairs are going to come in the SEL trim level and up. So you got a little walkway through the middle of the rear seats there. Bench seating is going to come on the SE. That is going to be optional on the SEL if you still wanted it. Automatic climate control for all trim levels. Dual rear USB charging ports though do come standard on every trim level of the Palisade. So the rear passengers can stay charged up. Heated second row seats coming on the limited and calligraphy. And actually the SEL premium as well. That new trim level gets those too. Ventilated rear seats, same three trim levels 
levels. 115 volt power outlet for the limited and calligraphy. You got a 12 volt power outlet back there that comes standard. Rear window sunshades for the XRT trim level and up. So if you get some fast food and you pull into a parking lot to eat, nobody's blinded as far as the second row passengers go. So that's always nice. So pretty much everything you could possibly want for the second row passengers is available on the Palisade. So I'm a huge fan of that. But now let's go ahead and make our way up to the front seats. Manually adjustable cloth seats for the SE. Leatherette seating for the SEL and XRT trims. Also for those two trims though, they will be heated front seats and power adjustable front seats with power lumbar. Ventilated front seats is going to come on the SEL premium trim level and up that new trim. Memory settings also for the SEL premium trim level and up and that's for up to two different drivers there. Leather seating coming on the limited and then Nappa leather coming on the calligraphy but it's kind of a Nappa leather suede combination and this is my favorite part about the Palisade. These are the most comfortable seats I have driven I think in an SUV, I'll put it that way. The most comfortable SUV seats I've ever experienced. Now, the Lexus LC500 have these F Sport seats and that's a, that's a car, that's a coupe, and those are my favorite, but this is probably my second favorite comfortable seats. It's got vertical seams, you sink into them. It's a Napa leather and suede combination. They are just so incredibly comfortable. This is the ultimate road trip vehicle simply for this particular comfortable seat here we got in our calligraphy. It's insane, but anyways. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the SEL trim level and up. It's gonna be two-toned for the calligraphy unless you go with this night edition and then it's all gonna be black. But um, two-toned, kind of like Volvo has done for a while now. So I think that's pretty cool. Heated steering wheel then is going to come on the SEL premium trim level and up. And now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup because it keeps getting cooler here, man. You got the Hyundai logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock that button to pop the rear tailgate. You got the remote start as well. And smart pack if you go with the calligraphy like we have today. Meaning if somebody pulls up too close to you in a parking lot, all you need to do is lock the vehicle push the remote start and then pull it out or back it out, whichever one, and uh, you can get the vehicle out without your kids actually slamming the door into the car next to you. So I love that feature. You will be surprised how often you're probably gonna use that feature because I feel like it happens to me all the time where somebody parks too close to me, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start there. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my phone on the brake and press that silver engine start button located just to the left of that middle air vent there. And so once started up, gauges are equally impressive. Analog gauges, by the way, come with the SE, SEL, and XRT trims, but then the SEL premium trim level and up is gonna give you a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster and it looks dang good. So I will say it does adjust dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. So if I put it in sport, it's going to kind of have this carbon fiber look with red hues. If I put it in comfort, it's going to be a bunch of silver and blue hues. If I put it in eco, that might be my favorite look, quite honestly. It's like the cyan kind of color scheme. It looks absolutely amazing. Um, by the way, we almost have a full tank here. We have 370 miles until uh, we run out of gas there. So that's a heck of a range for a larger three row SUV here. Looks like snow has the same silver look to the gauges and smart is the same thing yet again. By the way, that lock button in the middle of the uh, drive mode indicator, that is gonna be so you can lock this thing in permanent full-time all wheel drive in case you were curious if you wanted to drive that in the snow or whatever. But overall gauges are phenomenal. It gives you outside temperature. Like I said, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Um, there's a compass up there. There's a bunch of steering wheel mounted controls. You can completely customize the look. So well done Hyundai for the gauges there. But so now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. A power sunroof is going to come in the XRT and the SEL premium trim levels. Dual panel sunroof for the limited and calligraphy. So the rear passengers have their own sunroof back there too. LED interior lighting for the SEL trim level and up. You got the school bus style mirror. I'm playing around with that right now. That is pretty cool. So you could spy on the rear passengers a little bit. Microfiber headliner for the calligraphy. I love that too. It's so ridiculously soft. 64 colors of ambient lighting for the calligraphy and limited trims. Auto dimming rear view mirror with homely controls throughout the three different garage doors um, found on the bottom portion 
portion of that. That's for the SEL trim level and up, by the way, so I love that. Tri-Zone Climate Control for all trim levels, wireless phone charger for the SEL trim level and up, and you get some quilted leather door panels for the calligraphy as well. You guys can see that. And I like the piano black finish just above that. You get a little bit of the ambient lighting underneath of that too. Piano black finish is finished also above the passenger side glove box with a nice silver finish there. Um, just surrounding the cup holders here, you got that wireless phone charger. That's where that's located. Little LED light there. Um, if you push these two buttons surrounding the cup holders, that's where you hold the cup holders in place and then you just push them back into place there. That's pretty cool. Underneath of the cup holders, you got some hidden storage. So you could maybe put a purse or something else that you want concealed. And then just behind all that, you have one of the most deepest storages within a center armrest I've ever seen. You got a USB charging port in there too, 12 volt power outlet, so tons of space in there. You got aluminum speaker covers. I could go on and on. Hyundai crushed it with the interior quality of this. But anyways, let's not go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen here because quite honestly, they just keep on crushing it. This is an incredible SUV so far. And so a 12.3 inch color touchscreen display is going to come standard on all trim levels across the board. You got Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system believe it or not comes standard on all trim levels across the board as well you gotta love that there's a cool thing called a uh, quiet mode so that essentially eliminates the rear speakers and then limits the front speakers so if you got kids sleeping in the back on a road trip that's what that is for you got a voice memo system so you could record your voice and play it back at a later date if you didn't want to forget something you got uh, climate control information up there so you can set all of that course your uh, navigation information up there here's a new one though i haven't seen before on hyundai you got hyundai pay and that's a you have to activate blue link i guess to get that going but that's kind of interesting you got some traffic weather information and fuel prices up there as well uh, of course you can adjust your ambient lighting settings up there to go along with all of that and your radio information. So when it comes to the sound systems, there's two of them. You're going to find a six speaker sound system for the SE, SEL, XRT, and SEL premium trims. But then with the limited in calligraphy, you have a 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system. So that is the one that we have with us here today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one. Not sure why you would need that kind of a sound system in a three row suv but it's wonderful plenty of bass plenty of clarity that's a really good sound system for what this vehicle is but last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen at least is when you do put the palisade in reverse you have a pretty darn high definition rear view camera coming stated across the board 360 degree monitor then for the sel premium trim level and up and actually the XRT trim level this year as well. That's new for the XRT trim level is that 360 degree monitor, giving you that bird's eye view, letting you know what is completely all around you, which is always, it's going to lead us into safety. And so let me start by saying IIHS top safety picks. That's a heck of a start right there. Front side, side curtain airbags. You got a driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats. Rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. A blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. Forward collision avoidance assist, lane following assist, lane keep assist, driver attention warning system, safe exit assist, rear parking sensors, and adaptive cruise control with stop and go, which by the way is an incredible system on Hyundai and Genesis products. And then new, for 2025 front parking sensors for the XRT trim level and up. So that's pretty stinking cool too. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Palisade, I love this thing. This is something I would definitely consider for my family. I do have a three row Santa Fe right now, so I'm familiar with Hyundai. Maybe that's part of the reason I like it, but they did an incredible job with the Palisade. The digital gauges are great. Ambient lighting is great. The fact that the Palisade starts at under $37,000 is great as well. That's incredible. You get a factory navigation system that comes standard on all trim levels across the board. The most comfortable seats for an SUV in existence. That's really a big one for me because I got a bad back. You guys probably don't know why, but it's bad so these are incredibly comfortable seats plenty of space in this thing i think the only thing that i could think of that could possibly make this even better and this is going to be something that the palisade hasn't done yet but a four-cylinder hybrid powertrain just kind of like the highlander and the grand highlander do now and that's an incredible setup because you get 36 37 miles per gallon and all-wheel drive which is just phenomenal so 
I don't mind the MPGs in here. I, I've lived with it with the Santa Fe for eight, nine years now, and I'm fine with that. But if you can get that many MPGs and still get all wheel drive, it's just a really sweet option. And typically that's a pretty reliable setup, a four cylinder hybrid powertrain as well. So anyways, that's my recommendation for you, Hyundai. Not that there's anything wrong with this engine. I love the V6, but also like hybrids these days. So anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Palisade in the comments section below. That's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.